Hi, I'm Mitch Gallagher from Sweetwater. 25 years ago, a company was launched and their first product proved to be a game changer for many recording engineers, musicians, and studios. That company was Royer Labs and the product was the R121 ribbon microphone. Of course, there had been ribbon microphones before, but ribbons had fallen out of favor over the previous decades as condenser microphones became more and more popular. The R121 brought the spotlight back onto ribbon mics, and it's credited by many with rekindling the interest in ribbon mics that continues to this day. The R121 has become a first choice standard for many engineers for recording electric guitar and brass, but it's robust and versatile enough to handle just about any source you place it in front of. It's been one of my favorites since I first tried one way back when it was first announced. I've owned a pair of R121s since the very early days. For this video, I've had unprecedented access to background information and the workings of the R121. So let's take a closer look at this fantastic mic and how you can get the most out of it. Now this is gonna be a lot of fun because some of what you're seeing here will be the first time it's ever been shown outside of Royer. The R121 was the brainchild of mic genius David Royer. He originally designed it under the brand name Mojave Audio, but it was released under the Royer brand when that company launched. Mojave Audio, of course, later became a major microphone company itself that specializes in David's condenser and dynamic microphone designs. David has a particular affection for classical music, and I've been told that his original design criteria for the R121 was to make it so that it could faithfully capture every note of a pipe organ, top to bottom. Not an easy task. Here's a photo of the very first R121, which David built in his garage using a mic body he had custom machined. He designed the R121 with a truly innovative approach. Part of that is the actual ribbon design and construction. Part of it is the magnets that he used. Plus there's more as well. Now this microphone in the photo, R121 number one, was the one that engineer Joe Barisi first used on a guitar cabinet for an early recording by a band that became known as Queens of the Stone Age. And that set the stage for the R121 to become the go-to for recording guitar cabs. Getting back to the magnets, a pair are used in each R121, and they're super powerful magnets. Now I've got some right here. They're made from compressed neodymium powder that's then plated for protection. And while they're powerful magnets, they're also very fragile and easy to break on their own. You can see that I've got one that uh, I broke right here. But no worries, once the magnets are mounted inside the mic capsule, they're protected and in no danger. So that's actually the magnet that's used inside the R121. So let's take a look at the actual capsule and how those magnets mount inside. So this is the capsule. There are two magnets, one on each side here that are mounted into that frame with the ribbon right there in the middle. Now these two side ears here that are on the side of the capsule are actually the ears that you see sticking out of the side of the finished R121. The other thing to check out is the ribbon in the R121. I've got some of the raw ribbon material here. Now this is incredibly delicate. So it's a super thin strip of aluminum material. In fact, it's pounded to a thickness of 2.5 microns by hand, which is an amazing process. And Royer uses a super accurate, super sensitive scale to weigh the ribbon so they know when it's at the correct thickness. Now, it would actually take 40 of these pieces of raw ribbon material stacked up to equal the thickness of an average human hair. It's incredibly delicate, far too delicate in this form to actually use inside the element of the microphone. So Royer runs this ribbon material through a custom designed proprietary corrugation machine. That process not only corrugates or folds the ribbon, it also hardens it and makes it stronger. The ribbon is then installed into the capsule, as you can see here, and hand tensioned by a very skillful craftsman to a very specific 40 hertz. It turns out that this tension is the sweet spot for the R121 microphone design and it gives you the best sound quality. The finished mic would actually feature a very fine screen over the front and the back of the capsule to protect the ribbon. Now one thing to note here is that the ribbon is not centered front to back inside the capsule. It's actually mounted toward the front of the capsule and this gives a different response to the two sides of the microphone. So here we're looking at the front, the ribbon is pretty much right up against the face of the capsule. If we turn it around, the ribbon is actually inset quite a bit and that gives us a different response. This difference in the response in the front and the back gives us some real advantages for different recording applications as we'll see in just a bit. By nature of the ribbon mechanics, we get a figure of eight or bi-directional polar pattern with the R121. This means that it picks up sound from the front, it picks up sound from the back, and it rejects sound from the side. And again, the placement of the ribbon on the front side makes the rear lobe of the mic sound brighter than the front side of the mic. So we can use that and the figure of eight polar pattern to our advantage to mic two sources at once, one in front, one behind, and also to control bleed in the studio. 
So let's take a look at some tips for getting the most out of your R121. We'll begin with electric guitar cabinet. With electric guitar, the R121 is really pretty simple to use. Just place the mic in front of the cabinet, moving it until you find the spot that gives you the tone you want. The R121 comes with a stand mount, but I highly recommend picking up the RSM SS1 Slingshock. This is a shock mount for the mic, and it'll really help isolate the R121 from any resonance or noise that travels through the mic stand. The R121 is robust enough to handle incredibly high sound pressure levels, 135 dB or even more, but the Achilles heel of all ribbon mics is blasts of air, which can stretch or break the ribbon, and that means you have to basically replace the ribbon. To help prevent this, you can angle the R121 slightly, forward or back. If you've got a front ported cabinet, for example, or if you want to use the R121 on a kick drum or other instrument that can generate a blast of air, angling the mic is a good idea to prevent that directly straight on blast of air from hitting the ribbon. It's very common to pair the R121 with a Shure SM57 to get an incredible composite tone. A fantastic tool for doing this is the Royer SM21 axe mount, which makes it easy to mount the two microphones on a single mic stand and to align their capsule for phase accuracy. The Royer slides in from the top, the SM57 slides in from the side, align the two capsules, place it in front of your amplifier, and you're ready to go. The R121 also is a go-to mic for recording brass instruments such as trumpet or trombone. The warm, round response of the R121 captures the tone and power of brass perfectly. Plus, with a figure of eight polar pattern, you can get a nice open sound with a natural room ambience if you want. As I mentioned, the R121 is robust enough for high SPL sources like guitar cabinets. Check this out, Joe Perry from Aerosmith has been using five R121s on his amps on tour for years. But it's also a great mic for more delicate sources such as acoustic guitar. And this is where we can really take advantage of the brighter response of the back side of the mic. Simply flip the mic around backward and position it on the guitar for a big, rich, but articulate tone from your steel or nylon string instrument. Now one thing to mention here, like all passive ribbon mics, the R121 is sensitive to the impedance of the mic preamp that it's feeding. It likes to see a higher impedance, ideally around 1200 to 1500 ohms. If you have a mic preamp that offers selectable impedance, try some different settings. It'll definitely affect the tone and the response of the mic. But the other characteristic of passive ribbons is that they tend to have low output, which can be a limitation with quiet sources like say a nylon string guitar. In that case, an inline booster can be a big help. Royer specifically designed their D booster for their ribbons, though it works equally well with any passive ribbon or dynamic mic. It has a high input impedance for the best mic performance and a low output impedance for driving long cable runs or additional gear. The D booster is unique in that it features filtering and conditioning to stabilize and clean up phantom power, and it uses several discrete amplification stages to raise the mic gain with pristine fidelity and the highest signal to noise ratio. There's a lot going on inside these little boxes. 
One side note, the D-Booster 2 is a two-channel version, and it has the advantage that it can also serve as a super high-quality DI for signals. Another accessory that you should check out is the Royer Flex Bar, which allows you to easily mount two microphones for stereo recording with a lot of flexibility for positioning the mic pair exactly how you want. You saw this on our acoustic guitar. It works great for a pair of Royer R121s, but it's fantastic for a wide range of stereo miking applications with any microphones. You can adjust the angles, you can adjust the distance between the mics, it's really versatile. Like most ribbons, the R121 has strong proximity effect, meaning that you'll get a big bass tip up as you get close to the mic, along with increased output. So I recommend starting with the R121 placed a little farther away from the source than you'd start with, say, a condenser or a dynamic. Then move it in closer to get the balance of tone that you want. But don't be afraid to get right in on the source. You can get right close up. You'll get big bottom end and you'll also get a huge thick tone. The R121, as I mentioned, can handle 135 dB or even higher of sound pressure levels, so you don't have to worry about damaging or distorting the mic from high volume levels. So is the R121 only good for electric guitar cabs, brass, and acoustic guitar? Absolutely not. Ribbons are sometimes described as capturing sound in a way that's similar to the way our ears hear. This makes the R121 useful for just about any sound capture application. Try it on drums, for example. Just remember to angle the mic a bit and place it carefully to avoid air blasts. Experiment with the front and back of the mic for different sounds, and take advantage of the figure eight polar pattern for isolation and for reducing bleed. Beyond drums, you can use the R121 on all sorts of instruments. And remember, I've mentioned it a number of times, the back is brighter than the front, so take advantage of that where needed. The R121 can even be great on vocals, just don't forget to use a pop filter. I'll leave you with one final tip, and you can experiment with this one because your mileage may vary. The R121 comes with a mic sock that slips over the mic to protect it in storage when it's on a stand or when you're carrying the mic around. Remember, we want to avoid wind and air blasts, so slipping that mic sock over will help you prevent that if you're moving around with the mic. But some of Royer's R121 users have discovered that the mic sock that comes with the mic is nearly acoustically transparent. It basically becomes a wind sock at that point. Sock could also serve as a pop filter for vocal recording with the R121, and it means that if you forget to take the sock off of the R121 while you're recording, you may not even notice a difference in the sound. Try it yourself, with the sock on and with the sock off, and see what you think. I've actually got one bonus tip for you as well. I recommend storing any ribbon microphone so that the mic is positioned vertically. This helps prevent the ribbon from sagging, which over long periods of time can affect the response of the mics. If it's laying down like this, the ribbon can actually sag down a bit. So you want to keep that mic vertically, in my opinion, to keep it in its best condition. Maybe I'm a little obsessive, but I always store my R121s in their wooden cases standing upright. There you have it, an exclusive close-up look at a fantastic microphone that launched a resurgence in the popularity of ribbon microphones. I absolutely love my R121s and I use them constantly. And I'll tell you, the only thing better than one is a pair for stereo recording. Congratulations to Royer on 25 years of manufacturing this amazing microphone. If you have questions about anything I've discussed in this video, on the R121 or on any of Royer's products, point your browser to Sweetwater.com. You'll find a wealth of information there including product specs and descriptions, buyer's guides, how-to guides, and much more. Better yet, contact your Sweetwater sales engineer. They'll be happy to fill you in on all the details on the R121 and all of Royer's great products. Thanks for joining me today. I'm Mitch Gallagher from Sweetwater.